Here we're going to discuss how to refill one of our SCJ bottles. This is one of our H60 bottles, meaning it's good for 60 minutes. It's a high pressure, so it's 4,500 psi of compressed air that we're going to be using. Right now, this bottle is right around 4,000 psi, so we're just going to be topping it off. This is our cascade system. It has four banks that can be filled up to 6,000 psi. Right now, one's at 4,000, one's at 2,000, one's at 2,500, and one is at 4,900. What we need to do is make sure we choose a bank that is actually pressurized above what we need to be filling at. So we're going to be using bank 4, which is charged to 4,900 uh, PSI. The first thing that we need to do is open up this lower portion. So we need to unlock the, uh, the door. We release this. Sometimes it doesn't unlock, and what we need to do is lock and unlock repeatedly until we get to that point. Um, we may also need to turn on a bank to make this happen. So I'm going to turn on the lowest pressure bank here. I'm going to pressurize the system. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't cooperate, and you just need to work through it totally safe, nothing bad will happen. Here we're going to unscrew one of the two fill banks. Right now I'm using fill bank two. Take out the insert because it'll be too high and the SPBA bottle won't fit inside of it unless we do that. And attach the SPBA bottle. This should thread really easily. You should never have to force it. If you're forcing the thread, you're probably cross-threading it and you need to stop. Once we've fully connected this, we're going to make sure the bleed valve is locked and closed because we don't want to lose air. And then we're going to open up the valve on the STBA. This is going to pressurize the system just back to this point. And what we need to do is check that the value here is the same as the, uh, the value on the SCBA bottle. They are, they're within a, about 10% of each other, so we can now close this and lock the door. Once we've locked the door, we're going to choose the bank that's higher than where we're at. And that bank is going to be this bank that's at 4,900 or 5,000 PSI. We're going to open this up, and we're going to say that this value in bank 4 is equal to the inlet pressure over here within 10%. And we can see that they are. One's at 4,900, one's at about 4,850. The next step in this process, using the regulator, is to make sure that the fill pressure is what we want it to reach. So here we need to turn the fill pressure up. So I'm going to turn it clockwise, and you can see the fill pressure increases as I turn it. We're going to want to get a fill pressure of right around 4,500 PSI. So I'm going to turn it up to about there. Once the fill pressure is where we're at, we're going to slowly open this bank. And this corresponds to bank to, uh, to fill area number two. We'll open this up slowly. And you can hear the air start to move from these big banks down into the SCBA bottle. We try to let this happen slowly because the faster we fill the SCBA bottle, the hotter the bottle is going to get. And as the bottle cools, the PSI or the internal pressure of that bottle is going to decrease and we're not going to have as much air to breathe. So we'll let this fill slowly until we don't hear any air transferring between the two banks anymore. To expedite this, I'm going to turn this off, pretend like we've filled. Once we're at a fill point that we're happy with, we close the bank down. We close the main bank up here. I like to make sure that all the banks are off, all the fill connectors are off, and I unlock the door. And there you can hear that top part release. Now this is open, I'm going to close the STBA bottle. 
make sure that's closed. I'm going to bleed off the air that's in this line. You can watch the air pressure decrease if we look at the, if we look at the fill pressure there. Once we've bled all the air off the line, we can now safely disconnect the SCBA bottle and we're good. And this is an explanation of how to fill an SCBA bottle through the cascade system.